This next case describes a stent anchor technique to reduce the microcatheter loop inside an aneurysm for stent-assisted coiling of an anterior communicating artery aneurysm. Here we describe a 52-year-old female who was found to have an anterior communicating artery aneurysm on workup after a fall. As you can see here on the T2 weighted axial image of the MRI and MRA, there is a broad-based 9 millimeter anterior communicating artery aneurysm. Given the size and location of this aneurysm, as well as the morphology, we thought the aneurysm to be of high risk for rupture and necessitated treatment. Given the patient's age, we elected for stent-assisted coiling. Given the tortuous anatomy, in order to access the A2, we had to loop the wire and the microcatheter inside the aneurysm using a roller coaster or a loop-to-loop -loop technique. Once the wire was around the aneurysm and placed in the distal A2 segment of the anterior cerebral artery, we then navigated the microcatheter around the aneurysm over the wire into the distal segment of the A2. We attempted to reduce the loop of the microcatheter in the aneurysm by slowly pulling back on the catheter. However, this resulted in the entire catheter migrating proximally without reduction of the loop as shown here. At this point, we realized we would not be able to reduce the loop of the microcatheter, so we navigated the wire distal and brought the microcatheter once again around the aneurysm into the distal segment of the A2 portion of the anterior cerebral artery as shown here. Here we're measuring the parent vessel size at approximately three millimeters in order to size the stent. Here we see the wire and the micro and a second microcatheter being brought into the aneurysm. Now, here is a stent being navigated in the microcatheter around the aneurysm, being placed into the A2 segment. Slowly, we bring the microcatheter proximally and begin to unsheath the stent in the A2 segment of the anterior cerebral artery. As is shown here, the stent is being unsheathed and the distal tines are opening. Once the distal tines open and the stent begins to become expressed, using the pressure of the stent, of the self-expanding stent on the vessel, we begin to reduce the loop of catheter and stent in the aneurysm. Here we see the loop snap back, and now the loop is effectively reduced. We continue then to unsheath the stent, bringing the stent now into the A, across the aneurysm into the A1 segment. Once the stent is effectively placed across the A2 segment, the anterior communicating segment, and the A1 segment of the anterior cerebral artery, we can effectively coil the aneurysm without herniation of the coil into the parent vessel. We continue to coil the aneurysm until the aneurysm is completely coiled and we have good coil occlusion of this aneurysm. This effectively concludes stent-assisted coiling of an anterior communicating artery aneurysm. Learning points for this case. Gaining distal access is crucial to achieve appropriate stent deployment. 
Occasionally, you will need to learn how to loop a microcatheter in a larger aneurysm and effectively reduce the loop. If the loop cannot be reduced by simply pulling back on the microcatheter, deploying the stent distally and allowing the force of the stent on the parent vessel to act as an anchor will allow one to reduce the microcatheter loop prior to finishing deployment of the stent. It should be noted that navigating a catheter and a stent around an aneurysm due to difficult access is not a first line maneuver and direct access from the parent vessel into the branch vessel should be attempted first. Only when this fails should one consider bringing a catheter in and around the aneurysm followed by a stent as this may increase the risk of rupturing the aneurysm.